Hi, my name is David Mathis. Uh, I've been in this industry for, well, just over a decade now. And uh, I've helped a lot of people when it comes to their hearing loss. Uh, lots of family, lots of friends. I even wear hearing aids myself. And so hopefully this will be informative and will help you through what can be a very confusing process for a lot of folks. When it comes to the pricing of hearing aids, it's actually stabilized over the last 10, 15, 20 years even. However, the amount of technology that you're gonna get in today's hearing aids doesn't even come close to what you could purchase back then. Hearing aids these days can translate languages if you need it to. They can monitor your social engagement as well as help you be able to hear in a crowded restaurant and understand words. Most people don't understand that hearing aids are broken down into technology levels. You've got, you know, most people are gonna have a, a mid-level, an advanced, or premium. Some will even fall into like an economy type of a hearing aid. What dictates the level of technology is not the hearing loss, and this is where most people get confused. I talk to people all the time and they, they say, well, you know, David, you know, I've got, uh, my hearing loss isn't that bad. I can probably get by with a less expensive hearing aid. That, the hearing loss, again, has nothing to do with it. What we need to find out is how socially active the person is. Or in other words, how often is the person in challenging listening environments? So if I'm talking to someone and let's say they're a homebody, they basically live at home by themselves, they just need to hear a television, maybe talk on the phone, maybe go to the occasional birthday party, that person can get by with less technology as opposed to someone that is going to work, going to meetings, going to concerts, uh, sporting events. Because the second person is so much more socially active and is in challenging listening situations on a daily basis, they're going to require a faster and higher level of technology to be able to filter out all that background noise they're surrounded with. For, for that person that's hesitant to invest, typically that's going to be first time users. You know, they've never gone through the process. It, it, is, a, it is an investment, I, I understand that. However, you need to try them. The only way you're ever going to know if a hearing aid is really going to, to work for you is you're gonna to have to sit down with a local hearing professional, have them fit specifically to your unique hearing loss, and wear them out in all your everyday listening environments. You cannot read about a hearing aid, you cannot research a hearing aid. You actually, the only way you can actually research a, a, a hearing aid device is you're actually gonna to have to wear them and work with a hearing professional for fine tunings and adjustments. Probably the most common one I hear is people order something off online. Uh, they order something off TV, off the radio. They get it and it, it's a nightmare. 99% uh, of the time what you're actually ordering is they call them hearing amplifiers. And what a hearing amplifier does, it simply amplifies all sounds. Well, the crazy thing is most people have hearing loss due to noise exposure. And so if you think about it, what's an amplifier doing? It's exposing yourself to more noise. So therefore, while it might be helping in the short term, you're actually doing more long-term damage. So take your hearing serious, go sit down with the hearing professional, have the hearing test done, let them make a recommendation, try the recommendation, and then that way you'll know 100% did you make a wise investment.